Mickey Mouse, the embodiment of all things bright, happy, joyful, and of course, murder. Yes, murder. But only because in January of this year, Steamboat Willie was added to the public domain, so anyone and everyone can use it for whatever they want. And that is how we got this movie. A horror reimagining of Walt Disney's 1928 short film. The Mousetrap was directed by Jamie Bailey and written by Simon Phillips. And not to confuse you with the other upcoming Mickey Mouse horror movie Screamboat that will release next year, starring David Howard Thornton, who you know as Art the Clown. Also, if you've never seen my face before, my name is Crystal. I'm just a horror fan talking about horror movies on the internet. I post new videos every single Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to beat the Sunday scaries by talking about scary movies. In Mousetrap, it's Alex's 21st birthday and she's stuck at the amusement arcade on a late night shift, so her friends decide to surprise her, but a mass killer dressed as Mickey Mouse decides to play a game of his own with them, which she must survive. The movie opens with the only survivor of the massacre talking to two detectives about what happened. So it's like this back and forth cutscenes between their conversation with her and then her and her friends inside of the arcade. So the friend group is a bunch of young adults who have known each other since they were like five, eight, or nine. It's, it's very unclear. The setting of most of the film is inside this arcade, which reminds me of a David Buster's. And this is where Alex the main character works. As the arcade is about to close for the night, her boss Tim tells her she has to stay late for a last minute party, but this last minute party is actually her friends, surprising her for her birthday. Before all this happens though, Tim, her boss, decides to tuck in for the night by watching Steamboat Willie, and he has an old Mickey Mouse mask behind a glass case that starts talking to him and then the scene cuts. Meanwhile, the friend group is drinking and they're celebrating, and there is a bit of tension between some of the people in the group because they like Alex. It's honestly just like a thrown in plot that doesn't really add too much to the movie. As the friends get bored at the arcade and they wanna go to a real bar with real drinks, they realize that they're locked inside by a set of chains. They all assume that one of their friends is playing a trick on them, so they don't really do anything about it. Like one friend is getting stoned, another one is playing like a virtual reality game, and another friend is giving Alex a birthday gift. It's a very odd sequence of events considering they are locked inside of this arcade Arcade and they don't know who did it. Mickey Mouse then starts his killing spree. That sounds odd to say. But yeah, he starts picking them off one by one. But we don't get an on-screen kill until about an hour into the film. And the movie is only about an hour and 20 odd some minutes. But the kills that we do see, they're not bad. A little neck slice, a stab to the dome of the head. And I will say the last kill of the movie was brutal and shocking and honestly made up for the kills that we didn't see on screen. We're gonna talk about that last on-screen kill in a minute, so just relax. The friend group also realizes that the mouse does have a weakness and it's strobes, like strobe lights. Oh, and apparently the mouse can appear and disappear at will, but the strobe lights mess with that. And the voice of the mouse reminds me of Ghostface. Speaking of ghost face. There are plenty of nods to Scream in this movie, and I'm not mad about it because I love Scream. One character says, you can't say I'll be right back because then you're gonna die. Or when the killer mouse wipes the blood off of the knife with his gloved hand. So as I mentioned, the scenes are cutting back and forth to the sole survivor who's talking to the detectives, and the thing is she's recalling a lot of details, and she's not in a lot of the scenes suspicious. So then the friend group decides to trap the mouse <laughs> in the laser tag area. Alex tells the mouse that if he can find her during their hide and seek game, that he can do whatever he wants to her. So they trap him with strobe lights, but then the strobe lights just turn off. I, I don't know. And then he appears behind Alex and he chops her head off in front of all of her friends. 
It was wild. I was not expecting it. I even skipped back so I could watch it again because I wasn't expecting it. So after that, the mouse then disappears. The movie does end with a post credit scene showing the sole survivor sitting alone in her cell and the sounds of the mouse laughing can be heard and her cell door opening and she looks up and she has a smirk on her face. So I have to assume that the mask that I mentioned earlier, the one that was behind the glass and one that the killer was wearing, is supernatural. It kind of reminds me of this book. When the scene cuts, Tim must have put on the mask and it possessed him and gave him evil mouse powers. And I guess I have to assume that there's gonna be a sequel because of the post credit scene. So was this the best low budget horror film that you're ever gonna watch? No. Was it fun and stupid and dare I say cheesy? <laughs> yes. Yes, it was. Well, if you made it this far, you reached the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching me, Crystal, just a horror fan, talking about horror movies on the internet. Till next time.